David introduces. And you are live. Good luck. Hi, everyone. So, uh, this is the Quest for Glory crew. We're going to be playing the Quest for Glory series for Questing for Glory. Yeah! And again. Yeah, again. Uh, I'm David TKI, and on uh, Discord with me. Uh, I am Crow. He's Crow. I'm Mr. P.R. Miller. We are all uh, very happy speedrunners of this wonderful, wonderful series. All right. So real quick, um, in previous Questing for Glories, we have taken a single character through the series or most of the series. Uh, that's not what we're doing this time. Instead, we're just going to do a bunch of individual game runs back to back because that's a lot more of what you see on the leaderboards. Uh, sh and we'll be switching up the class in between each game, switch up the runner between each game, and we're going to get full points in all of them. So, starting off with the first game, we're running EGA, and we're going to be playing it as a magic user. Also, shout outs to our bag fellow in Cur what is it, Secret of the Silver Blades. We're going to be naming our hero after him. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. You know, we. Yeah, yeah. A shorter name is five heroes. Yeah, a shorter name is easier to type. That's the main reason. Uh, I am running on version 1.0, which is the original Heroes Quest. This is not Quest for Glory One EJ. Uh, I see in chat the awful waffle saying no paladin run. We are doing a paladin. Uh, the paladin is the one character that you have to import, and we're running that for Shadows of Darkness. But for this game, we are running Magic User. Uh, starting stats, you're going to go full 50 points into magic. Uh, in theory, there's a faster route that could do less magic and more strength, but uh, for marathon safety, full on magic. And uh, this, uh, this game is incredibly uh, intense, so I'm going to be leaving most of the commentary to Crow and Mr. PR Miller. Are y'all ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, I'm I I've been waiting for this for a couple for a couple weeks now. I'm excited to see uh see just how you kill this thing. No pressure. No pressure. All right. So uh we'll start time when I press start game. So that's gonna be in three, two, one, go. So this game goes fast and furious, and uh, David will have to focus a lot of his, you know, language centers of his brain on <laughs> action inputting commands here because uh quest for glory uh one uh and two will both be played with the text parser input uh david in order to do something will have to describe what he wants to do he will talk to people by saying stuff like ask about name and that sort of thing um he also just went through the magic shop he just uh went through the um Adventurer's Guild, and he has purchased some magic. As a wizard, we will, well, as a magic user anyway, we will have to learn all of the spells in the game in order to ultimately achieve 500 out of 500 points on the, as you see on the top right uh, portion of the screen. In the Adventurer's Guild, we signed the logbook and again, collected information by just talking to people. Um, a lot of the points you get in this game are pertaining to uh, you doing things that it thinks give you progress towards understanding what is happening in the game, which in a lot of these old games, that's where most of the challenge was, figuring out what the heck you're supposed to do. Uh, after that, with the fetch spell that we purchased from the magic shop, we went and destroyed a nest because uh, the pterodactyl there had a ring that the healer had lost. And then we are pretending that the uh, healer's hut is a quarry and we've picked up a few thousand rocks for the purpose of overflowing our encumbrance. Our weight is now very large and very mm -hmm. negative, which will <laughs> one death to... Okay, one death uh, yeah. to... Oh, it must have been Ogre. <laughs> it was um, the bear. Yeah, I think I'm a little behind on my screen. They might as well it was the bear that got him. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Whoops. Too close. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. so real quick, the reason I'm running version 1.0 is because uh, I could fetch the key from the Cobalt without training it at all. In version 1.2, you needed 35 fetch in order to get the key. 
Yeah, each individual spell in this game has its own skill that has to be individually trained. Um, the fetch spell is also, in later versions of the game, required to be trained in order to get the seed from the Spitting Seed Spiria plant uh, that uh, he got a seed from a little bit ago. Uh, next up, he's going to the meat and they're just a bunch of little fur balls with uh, chicken legs and uh, they are total bros and if you just ask one of them about their fur they'll just say okay grab some out of themselves and just turtle it out if you get very lucky uh in this version of the game um just random crap comes out of the meat's hole whenever uh, you ask for something and you might sometimes get the other item that as a magic user you need to get uh, specifically the Detect Magic Scroll. So now he has that spell as well. Next up, he visits, visits the Dryad after picking up some mushrooms. He gives the Spitting Speed Spiria uh, seed to the Dryad so that the Dryad can uh, spread that elsewhere. The Dryad tells him how to produce a Dispel Potion. Uh, next, uh, he visits the uh, Brigands who are um, plotting a takeover of the band of thieves that are currently plaguing the town. There's essentially four problems that face this area of Spielberg. There is uh, a missing prince, a missing... Princess, we've already rescued the prince. who used to be a bear and we got the key in order to rescue that um we still need to deal with the princess we still need to deal with the band of thieves and we still need to um deal with baba yaga the ogress that uh, cursed the land to make all these things happen uh we're now dealing with the northern end of town uh we are paying alms to the poor we are collecting information from people we are also collecting 50 apples from the um Farmer's Market, uh, which we will eventually give to an ice giant. We then need to advance the clock as quickly as possible. And uh, in order to do that, we pick a fight in the bar in order to um, uh, get thrown out. And I guess we pass out for a while and that advances the clock. Next up, uh, we go to the inn because we advanced it to uh, sundown. And we can, at that point, uh, meet with Abdulladu, who's actually from the next game of the series region. And uh, he's a merchant whose stuff was stolen by the brigands. And by befriending him, uh, by giving him food, because he's always eating a lot of stuff. <laughs> but once we have befriended him, he agrees that if we get him the rest of his stuff, he will take us along to Shapir, which probably needs a hero as well. That's By the way, David, don't forget to talk to the Weapon Master and Carl. Those, that's one of your notes here. <laughs> well, I just talked to him, so we're good there. You did All good. All right. Sweet. So uh, we do a whole bunch of stuff in the castle, uh, and then we head out of the castle. Uh, but, but within the castle, we work in the stables. This is supposed to be an early uh, source of cash. Um, David had to grind a few times in order to uh, just repeatedly enter a room until the Weapon Master showed up so he could talk to him. Um, the next uh, series of events is just going to be uh, buying a lot of stuff from the magic shop. Um, at this point, we have, are loaded with cash because uh, we were awarded 50 gold pieces. Um, in, that, in this game, each one gold is worth 10 silver. It's kind of a strange money, money system. Most of the rest of the games use a 100 uh, hundredths of a large unit uh, per small unit uh, thing like uh, American money uses, but this one is 10 to 1. Uh, next up, we meet Henry the Hermit, uh, who happens to have the trigger spell that he learned from his buddy Erasmus the Wizard. We'll meet that guy later, but for now, Henry the Hermit uh, uh, will allow us to uh, make his ladder visible again, if so we choose, but since we already know it's there, we no longer really need to do that. Uh, we talked to Bruno. It looks like we don't have to remind him about that necessarily. <laughs> um, so Bruno is one of the guys who's trying to uh, overthrow the band of thieves. Uh, but if you pay him money, he'll give you some useful intel. Um, Quote unquote useful. <laughs> Quote unquote useful. Uh, he also tells you to uh, drink the dragon's breath at the bar, which I invite anyone here who's playing the game to do. After no, don't. You know, saving. 
<laughs> for your safety. Set the game first and then do silly things. <laughs> right. Uh, I'm Next going. Up. I'm at Erasmus's now. Okay. Cool. Uh, so uh, he briefly saved a fox and then gave a whole bunch of uh, apples to an ice giant in order to get a glowing gem. And then he climbed up to the top of uh, Mount Zauberberg where uh, Erasmus is chilling. There's a brief Monty Python reference. Um, and this is the first of uh, a few cases where he has to um, wait for a conversation animation to happen before he responds. Next up is the that was a good maze, mage's maze. Which is probably happening right now. And... Uh, he will need to move all sorts of objects within the maze using magic that he has, as well as changing the size of his little bug. He's the guy who starts on the upper left portion of the screen, and he's probably the only guy who's making meaningful process towards the lower right. The AI for Erasmus is not particularly good at this, and it looks like that was an excellent was, maze. Nice job. That was excellent. <laughs> So uh, Erasmus and Fenris are a uh, wizard and familiar pair, although the two of them can't quite agree which one's the familiar and which one's the wizard. Um, next up, we just pass some time by going to the uh, castle. Uh, you can sleep at the barracks. You get thrown out as the uh, guards return for the night, uh, but this is a quick way to advance the clock to the night time. Uh, at the, uh, during the night, we Whoa. have a few things. Uh, <laughs> Are you stuck somewhere? Uh, the troll is hitting me more than usual. Oh, that's troubling. Um, okay, I'll see so... that in a second. <laughs> yeah, so we're on a bit of a delay. I thought we'd be, but oh well. Um, so the uh, troll and the uh, cheetar are both enemies we have to defeat. Um, and we need this for their drops so that we can give them to the healer. Um, the and troll will drop his beard, uh, which we will take, and then uh, Cheetars will drop their claws. Uh, these are two particularly difficult enemies in the game, and we have, like, zero. Uh, uh, you had a couple of asterisks uh, whenever you're typing take beard, so you might want to check if you actually got it. Uh, I uh, saw the text. Uh, yeah, what happens is, is that for whatever reason, the parser doesn't actually Whoa. include Dang any it. of those uh, little symbols there at the end. So even if we type an asterisk or like an exclamation point, for some reason, it seems to work. Something just occurred to me as a way I might be able to reduce my delay. So I'm going to give that a try. Uh, so we should at this point be heading towards Baba Yaga, I believe. Oh, no, we found a Cheetar first. Awesome. So... Um, Again, we're taking a lot more damage than we normally do, but hey, there's a uh, marathon run. That's kind of what you expect, isn't it? <laughs> Pretty much. So, ah, nuts! I accidentally ran away. Yeah, oh, in case no. it wasn't clear I why he... Again. Do you still have enough mana potions to handle it? Oh, more than enough. I'm not worried about okay. mana. So yeah, uh, for marathon safety, we do grab quite a few healing potions and mana potions and whatnot. Um, so... Uh, he's just spamming Flame Dart because that's the only combat relevant action he has. There is actually a glitch where you can potentially hit the enemy right as combat is beginning, and if that happens, the enemy will just instantaneously die for some reason. <laughs> um, while he's been fighting, Did he I grab the also claws? advanced. Yeah, yeah, he's also he's advanced the claw. Uh, to where uh, it is now midnight, which is the only time where you can get the Mandrake Root, which Baba Yaga, the Ogress, actually wants. And so we're going to give uh, Bonehead the skull that guards the gate, uh, the glowing skull, the glowing gem, which allows him to see. Uh, and then we're now in Baba Yaga's hut. And at this point, David still has to pay some attention because he has to say yes occasionally, but this is a pretty long break in the run. So yeah, now yeah, it's an excellent I, time for you guys to uh, talk a little bit about how the run's going and uh, maybe respond to chat. Uh, yeah, uh, ooh, this is, I'm so tired right now. Okay, uh, Milo, that's how about okay. you guys? That's all right. Um... Baba Yaga, her cutscene is pretty much unavoidable at this point. I mean, we're looking for ways, and we're always looking for ways to sequence break these things. But it, and while there are sequence breaks for most of the game, every once in a while we hit a point where we're wondering, you know what, we could cut off tons of time if we can do it. And there are new things being found pretty much constantly. 
However, this is one of those ones that we just don't actually have. Um, in, in case it also wasn't clear why he wasn't taking damage earlier, he overflowed his damage with or his weight with rocks that pretty much makes him unhittable. So the fact that he was taking as much damage as he thought he was, or um, we're just not used to seeing that at that point, but that's what, uh, how, it, what do you want to say? That's bad. like marathon it, luck to begin with. Yeah, 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 it's just bad luck. The rocks make you really difficult to hit, but not impossible. And it's not strictly necessary for magic user or a thief. I just do it so I don't have to use hit and run tactics instead, because those kind of suck and I'm prone to accidentally running away. But for a fighter, it is absolutely necessary to overflow on routes. Yeah, because the fighter has to do so much extra combat in the game. In fact, each class has different things that it must do in order to advance its points to the maximum. So the magic user is based around magic. Um, how? Wow, that makes sense. The thief is based around stealing things and breaking into houses. Uh, very heroic actions. What was it? <laughs> Either way, uh, the fighter is also, um, is also one of those guys that... Uh, it seems to like combat, so that's um, why it's so important to have that, because we are usually so underleveled as we're going through this uh, that we need to come up with either clever ways to handle it or find out what the bare minimums are in order to handle these situations and get them right. Yeah, we'll be seeing more of that in Quest for Glory 3. Right. Uh, as for our current weight, I'd like to point out that all of this time, this like five minute or so break in the middle of an otherwise intense run is to acquire how many points? Three. Three. <laughs> Speaking of which, I do have some score checkpoints to make sure that I'm on track. I expect to be at 272 at this point. Um, 275 after I give her the mandrake route. Which makes perfect sense. It looks like you're going to be right on track. Yeah. Uh, a, an interesting difference between this and the remake, uh, if you come into Baba Yaga's hot hut and you have the mirror, then she's just going to skip straight to the uh, encounter where you're supposed to use the mirror. Unfortunately, you can miss out on these three points by doing that, so you have to visit Baba Yaga before you uh, use the Dispel Potion on Elsa. In the remake, you can, keep, you can uh, see Baba Yaga at the end. There's also some other things in the remake as well that you can miss out points and almost, well, not exactly be a dead man walking, although there are plenty of situations in Sierra games where you're a dead man walking. But uh, asking uh, Bonehead for a deal is exclusive to actually giving him the deal in the gem ahead of time. So if you miss those points, you miss those points, in which case it's uh, GG 100% over. <laughs> Thankfully, I'm on pace. I must have remembered yep. the deal. <laughs> yeah, there, there are a lot of little places in all of these games where uh, you can lose points uh, just by accidentally not talking to someone or not asking them the right question or whatever, which doesn't actually change the game's flow at all. It just means you didn't get the points and it can be hard to track afterward. And to, for some situations, such as the castle in this game, you may not be able to go back and pick those points back up if you miss them for too long. Here, eventually the castle will be off limits because it'll end the game early uh, once you have uh, dealt with Elsa, but not dealt with Baba Yaga yet. Yay, I got my three points for the Mandrake route. <laughs> All right, sweet. Nice. So at this point, I believe we sleep at uh, Uranus Peace next, I think? That's right. Magic user is the only class required to sleep there. Right. For so the other Aranis two classes, is... I normally sleep at the Dryad. Right. So yeah, Uranus Peace is a uh, magical safety. It has some flowers that are magical, and uh, we'll take those to take to the healer. It also has a calm spell, which we're probably never going to cast because we're going to just do it the hard way when we reach Toro the Minotaur later. And then uh, we also get some fruit, which is, you know, just free food and, you know, getting a free lunch is always worth points. And then we sleep, and it's worth points for a wizard to sleep there because normally when you sleep, you only get as many MP as you would have gotten by resting in a equivalent amount of time and mp restores a lot slower than all of your other resources however in arana's peace i guess because the place itself is so magical you just instantaneously recover all of your magic so um that's pretty convenient uh next up we'll, we'll be dealing with the kobold again you may be asking wait a minute didn't we already save the bear and yes we did however 
uh, the kobold will um, give us points if we defeat it. So we're going to use the dazzle spell we earned from uh, Erasmus. And now that we have a lot more skill with flame dart, as well as some potions for safety in case we need it, uh, it is much safer for us to knock out the kobold and then steal the coins from his invisible chest. Uh, so we do that and we get out of here. Another thing we're doing throughout um, that is not at all visible on stream is we are frequently turning on and off this high speed hero setting, uh, which uh, is exclusive to the uh, Heroes Quest version of the game, as I understand it. And it, instead of just increasing how quickly frames will uh, be displayed, I think it also does some sort of uh, frame skipping, which will actually break the game in certain places if Correct. you have it active at the wrong time. Uh, but uh, if you have it on when you are just going across screens, that it makes each screen transition take, what, a quarter of a second? You really blaze off fast. Um, next up, we're just going to pretend we can move a rock until eventually we can. <laughs> uh, this game causes you to gain stats anytime you try to use one of your stats, regardless of whether you were successful with it or not. So by trying to open this rock, we are somehow gaining additional muscle mass until eventually we can just open that secret back door. We're now doing a very technical, or probably just did, a very technical um, procedure to get past the uh, Minotaur without bothering to cast Calm and watching uh, the Minotaur go down to sleep, which takes a little while. Um, so just cast open and then open the door uh, carefully behind him without being spotted. We then go through the rest of the gauntlet. This is pretty typical Sierra adventure game nonsense where there's just a whole bunch of traps everywhere. You do anything slightly wrong, you just die. York's room, which is kind of an MC Escher themed thing, is less extreme than the other ones, but he's gotten through that super darn quick. And wow. now we have a dispel potion. We figured out that the uh, brigand leader happens to be Elsa von Spielberg, uh, the princess, uh, just enchanted. So now she's a pretty princess again, and now we have rescued her. And in the same room, there is also a mirror. We grab the mirror um, in order to get out, and uh, we will, thanks to having the mirror, be able to deal with Baba Yaga. Otherwise, we would just head straight to the uh, castle and be done. Um, one more thing that we probably should have talked about much earlier, but we. I'm going to so call time pretty so soon. Going on. Yeah. Uh, uh, time is like going to be on, real quick. Time is on the next text box from Baba Yaga. Um, time. Wow, that oh, is. Right. I guess we can talk about noun stacking next game. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a lot of it. And since now we have a few extra seconds, it looks like he's heading into the final thing with Baba Yaga. He's got 425 points. He hasn't missed anything. Um, we're on different times, it seems like. But uh, the fact is noun stacking is this neat little feature where it'll read the verb at the beginning and only the last noun at the last second. And you're going to be seeing a lot of that whenever we go into Quest for Glory 2 because that is the EGA. So that was a good time, David. Yeah, according to my timer, it was 20 minutes and 5 seconds. Uh, I see it was 20 minutes, 13 seconds on the stream. Sweet. But still, 20.05 is pretty good. It's only 20 seconds above my personal best. Anyways, yeah, that's Quest for Glory 1. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant Hero's Quest. That's Hero's Quest. <laughs> 500 points as a magic user. And that's probably the most intense run of the series. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's constantly moving. So blazingly quick. And uh, the text parser does have a maximum speed you can type at, but it is still fast enough that you really have to keep on the ball all the time. <laughs> yeah, the text parser, while the mouse uh, pulls the system uh, once every frame, uh, the text parser is once only every seven frames. And every once in a while, you'll see us miss, miss a key. It's likely not because we're mistyping. It's likely because we happen to hit that magical seventh frame incorrectly. And so that... the party flies off to Shapir, which happens to be the locale of next game, which uh, Mr. PR Miller will be going through as soon as we get there. Yeah, that's right. Coming up next is Mr. Pure Miller doing Quest for Glory 2 Trial by Fire. The original one, the EGA one. Correct. 
and we're going to be doing it a little bit differently and we'll be starting with a new character so you'll see those stats whenever we come up with it should be a lot of fun stuff going on and it like one it's a little intense at the beginning it does in it does calm down a little bit more as we're going along here but uh this is also this uh end credit scene is one of those things that drives us nuts whenever we're doing the uh any percent speed runs through the series because this ending credits is something like four or five minutes long it's about three minutes but it's pretty long i don't mind it yeah. too much because i love this track but you know that's Three minutes. Yeah. The three. sound used in all the Quest for Glory games um, kind of automatically scales itself to whatever hardware it thinks you have. Um, both David TKI and Mr. PR Miller have um, set things up so that uh, DOSBox can effectively use an emulator for the NT32, mm. which is the uh, uh, for the time, at least, a really sweet sound engine that al allows for, like, dynamic sample changing and that kind of thing that was wildly beyond what anything the uh, uh, sound blaster could handle. Yeah, and even though you won't hear that on my, my, my track, the MT-32 follows the entire series through from Quest for Glory 1, EGA, all the way up through 4. It wasn't until 5 whenever the hardware had pretty much caught up and they could actually use orchestral soundtracks for the game. So here's our advertisement for the next game. It's Heroes Quest 2. Or, no, or is it Quest for no. Glory 2? It's Quest for Glory 2. Uh, some sort of copyright infringement uh, thing that the legal team just decided to dodge. Conveniently, since... Um, the first game is called Heroes Quest if you have the original version. It makes it pretty easy to know whether you're going to get these extra little uh, bead features uh, <laughs> uh, or not, just from that. All right, yeah, so with that, they patch things, so. I think it's 